Hey data fans, Reid here. Today, I'm going to show you a really cool technique that utilizes slicers and calculation groups to conditionally hide or show columns on a matrix table, depending either on if they contain any data or simply based on selecting just certain metrics from a slicer selection. Now, this can be very useful to declutter a matrix table and allow the users a high degree of configuration. So let's go ahead, hop into Power BI, and get started. So let's start the conversation with showing you just what I have here in the report itself. There is a sales details table in here with a bunch of data contained in it. Now notice that it's selected on year 2012 with average sales and sales. I select 2013. I now get prior year, year over year, and year over year percentage. So these values are showing up conditionally when there actually is prior year data to fill up with it. Instead of having these columns be completely empty, it will go away if I am selecting a year that does not contain any data for them. So they conditionally show up or disappear depending on the year selection. You also might notice that this slicer at the top also changes the metrics that are available to select to display down here. In 2014, there is data for all of these different metrics. And if I individually select units, that data displays below. Same thing if I was to just select average sales only average sales will show below. So both, there is a condition that has the slicer selection here that depending on whether or not there's data or not, I can actually conditionally hide or show values below it. And separately, I can select the metric up here at the top to individually pick which metric I would like to show. So let me clear that back out. And I wanna walk you through how I built this. So the matrix table over here has standard fields from our relational data model that's in the model for country, class, and color. However, there is one thing that is unique in here. Notice that I have in my value section, something called sales, but we are showing a lot more than just sales, obviously, in here. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six different metrics showing. That's because the column in here, name, is actually coming from a calculation group called metric selection name. So let's go ahead and walk through that first. I'm gonna come up to external tools and I'm gonna open up tabular editor three. And by the way, I am using the paid version of the tabular editor that was just released last week, but this technique will work both with tabular editor, the free version, the one that you see over on the left or the paid version that I'm currently using. I just prefer the paid version because honestly, as a quick side note, it has an amazing amount of features. So highly recommend that you really go explore it and just see if that's something you would wanna to add to your uh, professional dev tool set. Now a tabular editor open, I'm gonna go over to metric selection in here. This is the calculation group that I created. And there's a few things inside of here that I wanna point out within it. The calculation items that I have is the following below. I have one for units, average sales, sales, prior year, year over year, and year over year percentage. Now taking any one of these as an example, what you'll notice is that there's a couple of things happening in here. The basic thing, this I will explain in a minute because that's actually a dynamic filter that I'm applying. But right in here, it's simply returning units or average sales or prior year or any of these other calculations. So for this named calculation item, for the actual matrix table itself, it's just returning that metric. So let me minimize this and show you in here. So when I add that calculation name into here, it adds a breakout for each one of these. And actually whatever goes in the value section doesn't even matter because this is a placeholder because the created calculation items inside of here override whatever this is because it individually pulls in this. So really you can put any calculation in here. All this needs is a placeholder to simply allow the calculation group to actually generate whatever the script is in there. Now there's another part of that calculation that I wanted to mention as well. The fact that we had that switch statement in here is tied to this. The fact that if I select 2012, notice that all the items in here go away. Now there's a reason that this is happening. In here, we have a filter called name filter and I set that to equals one. And if I actually look at the name filter in here and bring this up here at the top, Notice that I simply just have that equals zero. The important part is that I have a measure called name filter. So let me go ahead and go back to tabular editor three and show you what's happening with this and how that's filtering this slicer there at the top. So in here, what's happening right now is it's determining by the selected measure function if the measure is called name filter, which it is up here. If this is the name of the measure, which is the filter being used on that visual for this slicer, if it's called name filter, then simply it's doing a check to see if is blank sales, or in this case, 
Also, if blank is average sales or units, it's basically checking to see if any of these calculations are actually returning data because in 2012, we don't have any data for prior year over year and year over year sales percentage. I had to do it in here because if I actually try to create this logic in the measure, remember the calculation group will automatically overwrite it and basically just fill it in with the data itself. So I am putting this inside of the calculation group in here, which then means that when this is the name filter, as the actual name of the measure itself, this calculation as a filter is gonna run this bit of logic right here. And in this visual, the slicer, there's basically data behind units, average sales, sales, or you know any of the prior year, year over year or year over year percentage. So it's really just doing a check of is empty or is blank. And if it is, return zero else one. So that means that with a filter of one in here, Oh, let me undo that. There we go. With the filter of one in here, then that will only filter it to showing slicer items with data in it. So not only do we have a selection that will get these to conditionally disappear below, but we also have a slicer that makes sure that when we go to 2012, a user cannot accidentally select prior year because there's just no data in there. So we've dynamically filtered and shown and hidden various calculations with calculation groups, both in a matrix table and in a slicer at the top. And I think there's a lot of possibilities for people to use this, honestly, both with just, again, hiding and showing values that are in the matrix table just based off of data selection. It's really nice to have the columns disappear. And then for added benefit, I was really happy I was able to figure out a way to dynamically update that slicer at the top because with any slicer or filters, you want to make sure that the user doesn't accidentally click a value or a category that has no data behind it because then the data disappears and people wonder why the visual broke. So I'm happy I was able to account for both scenarios. Hopefully this is very useful to you. And really at the end of the day, you know, it's something that um, I hope you guys find a lot of different ways to be able to implement. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.